Hey guys, this is Abo with Coffee and Code. Today we'll be looking at ArrayList. In the previous video, we looked at arrays. If you want to check that out, please press the banner above. And if you're happy with arrays, then please continue with this video. So just to note before we get into ArrayList, is you need to include the systems.collections.generic library inside C Sharp so the compiler knows how to use the dynamic lists. If you don't have this line above here, then please just type using space system.collections.generic. Okay. Let's get started. So to declare our array list, we can just type list followed by the less than sign, then the type that we want inside, followed by the greater than sign, then the variable name, and then we need to make it equal to the list again with the type and then the open and close parentheses. So to actually make this for our example, so in the last video we used a array of numbers. So we will do the same thing here. And we can say we want a list of integers call our variable name numbers and we're making a new instance of the list as an integer. Perfect. So all this line is saying is we want a new list called numbers and we're just going to instantiate it so it's ready to be used. So with lists they're dynamic in nature so we don't have to give them a length. We can just add and remove numbers as and when we wish. So we can just type numbers.add and we can add one and we can just copy and paste this line a couple of times and change the brackets and now we've just added four numbers that easily before we needed to do something like this and assign the value of one inside position zero the difference of the dynamic list is that we are simply just saying we want to add one and it says here that the add function will add an object to the end of the list which is perfect because we don't have to worry about indexes and then if we want to be able to print out the values we can do a for loop and we can say numbers.count and then we can just put console write line in here and we could just say numbers i plus a space and if we run that we can see all the numbers being displayed in the console as shown here we've made a new list we've added four numbers and we've just printed them all out. We can use a different method for printing out all of the values inside numbers. So if you type for each, and if you press tab twice, then it automatically puts this code in for you. So we're saying for each var item inside our collection, which in our case is numbers, then we can just do a console.write and we can do item plus space. And if we change this one to a right and place a blank line in between, what we should see is exactly the same input. Now, just to explain what the difference is between these two for loops is in essence, they're exactly the same. In the first one, we are saying we want to go from position zero to position count. And from the second one, we're saying we also want to go from position zero to position count. Both for loops want to go through the entire numbers list to be able to retrieve all of the values. But the difference with the for loop that we are typing statically is that we're telling it we want to go from the zero position to the count. But for example, if we actually want to miss out the first number and start doing something with the second number, then we can. Whereas this for loop will only give us every single item and doesn't give us control over which items to display we can give control using this for loop. So if you always want to just print everything, then it's easier if you use this. But if you're also used to this for loop, then it doesn't really matter which one you pick. You have a bit more flexibility to this one, whereas this for each loop will just give you every single value inside. So let's move on to a real world example for our lists. So this is just a copy and paste from the previous video's code, just to show you what it's like to do an array. So now we can translate this into a list. So this equivalent line would be list int numbers equals new list int. So now that we've created the list, we can get rid of the old list. And the difference between this program and the last program is we need to type how many times that we're going to do this. So if we want to load in five numbers, we can type five in here. And then we don't want to be referencing our list with a specific index so we can change this to the dot add function from the previous example and then this for loop now works now we need to tweak the second for loop 
and say that it's numbers.count because we don't have a length for the list, we have a count which tells us how many items are inside the list. So we go through five times, ask the user what number they want to enter, we convert the number, add it to our list, and then loop around all of the numbers that are available inside the list and print them out to the screen. So let's give that a shot. And there you go, you can see that all the values that are being entered in here, which is five numbers, as per this for loop, is now being stored correctly inside the list and printed out right here. Just to run through this one last time, we're creating a list and initializing it with the constructor and we'll loop around five times because we want the user to enter five numbers and for each input, their number will be converted to an integer 32 and placed into the list. After this for loop is finished five times and read in the five numbers, we'll then use another for loop to be able to print them all out to the user. This is just a basic entry point to how lists work. I'll be making projects in the C Sharp learning series so you can see how this works in a real world example. Thank you for watching, please like and subscribe and I'll see you in the next one.